Here you are, Mitchell. You're going out into the world a free man. I hope you become a useful and law-abiding member of society. Ah, oh, cut out the lecture, Warden. Bitterness won't get you anywhere, Mitchell. Now that you've squared your debt... My debt ain't squared. Not by a long shot. I got a lot of collecting to do. Sounds like you're heading to come right back. Don't worry. I won't be back. For your sake, I hope not. That's why I brought you together here, instead of our customary individual conference by television. As for you, Brown, your department must get results in your rubber research. We are exerting every effort, Mr. Montgomery. And the Department of Ores and Metals, Jewett. Our operating cost is cut to the bone now. Then cut into the marrow. Thank you, Nicky. Let me see, 24.7. Gentlemen, you are about to witness the making of synthetic gold. Well, if you can manufacture gold, it will be the crowning achievement of your professional career. You all know what you have to do? Yes. Are you ready, Nicky? Yes, sir. Put on your insulated helmets. Ready? as well electrocuted me as it scared me to death. One step more, Jameson, and you'd have met instant death. What's all the fireworks for? Gold, Jameson, synthetic gold. You mean you can make gold? I found a way to rearrange the positrons, electrons, and neutrons of the atom to produce gold. Boy, what a headline for my newspaper. Oh, no, not yet. Well, how do you do it? Well, now, my boy, after all, that's my secret. <laughs> Well, now you run along up to the house. Werner's waiting for you. And I'll see you tonight at dinner. All right. And now, gentlemen, we'll pick up where we left off. Are you ready, Nicky? Ready. Put on your helmets, gentlemen. of alchemists since the beginning of chemistry. That's wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations. Oh, Mr. Cromo, as a member of this board, as well as the personal attorney to Dr. Gironda, have you anything to report regarding the transfer of 50,000 shares of his stock to Mrs. Gironda? Nothing so far. Well, let's it right now. Miss Dillon, get Dr. Gironda on the television. Yes, sir. Thirty-four point six, sixty-seven point one. That right? Thirty-four point six, sixty-seven point one. The home office is calling you, Doctor. By Jove, I forgot all about that meeting this afternoon. Excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Sure. I'm sorry, gentlemen, to be absent. Never mind the apology. 
What about the transfer of the stock to Mrs. Gironda? I have something of much more importance to talk about than stock transfer. I have finally perfected a method for making gold. Could that oh, be possible? Gold? Synthetic gold. If it is true, we're the richest corporation in the world. And now, gentlemen, if you will come to my home at nine this evening, I will turn over the gold formula to you at that time. You will inform Mr. Bouchard and Mr. Denton. Gentlemen, this meeting stands adjourned until nine this evening at Dr. Gironda's home. This discovery of Gironda's can easily upset the world's entire economic structure. Don't let that worry you, Van Dyne. trying to take me. Imagine anyone trying to jip you. When did you get out? Yesterday. I got things I want to talk to you about. Okay, come on upstairs. Sit down. Cigarette? No, thanks. What's on your mind, Joe? Do you ever happen to hear of a fellow named Gironda? Dr. Paul Gironda? Sure, what about him? Has he got any dough? Should have. He's got a place that costs him plenty to keep up. You know where it is? Yeah. What if you'd mind running me out that way? Sure. Got something good? Plenty good. I'll spill it to you on the way out. Shall I serve coffee? Oh, thank you, Wickham. You may leave it. Why, hello, Shirley. Are you warm enough, Mrs. Duranda? May I get your scarf? Uh, no, thank you, dear. I'm all right. Well, it's getting late. We'd better be getting to work, Shirley, if we're to finish before Mr. Montgomery and the others arrive. Oh, Paul, must you go? Yes, only for half an hour, dear. Come on, Shirley. There's the Duranda place, Joe. Some layout. Pull up under these trees. Oh, Berna. Yes, Mother? I think I'll leave you two alone until our guests arrive. Don't let us chase you away. 
<laughs> You're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she couldn't be more considered if she were your own mother. She is a dear, isn't she? She certainly is. And in this hypothesis, I assume that the atomic structure of the base metal was largely disintegrated under thermal velocity into constituent radicals, each radical being electrically charged. I think that's all, Shirley. Now, you can go to your room and transcribe that and type it, and I'll put the rest of the formula in the book myself. All right, Doctor. Car number one seven. Car number one at the estate of Dr. Geronda, six five zero three Montclair Drive. That is all. What happened, Walter? Dr. Geronda, your father, Vernon. Quick! Dr. Geronda, open the door. Dr. Geronda, open the door. Why, Shirley? What's the trouble? Something tapped to Dr. Geronda. My husband. Oh. Ah! Oh, but Walter, you've got to get in. You two. Dr. Geronda, quick, open this door. Oh, break it. Break oh. it, Walter. Open the oh. door. What's the trouble here? Who sent for the police? It's upstairs, sir. Dr. Geronda! What's the matter, Jameson? Help me with this door, Regan. Why, he's gone. Who's gone? Dr. Geronda. He was lying here a moment ago. Oh, oh, Shirley. What do you mean? What happened? Well, I heard a noise and someone grabbed me and threw me out. You better call headquarters, Bill. Don't you touch anything in the room, Jameson. All right, Regan. Hello, Jacob. Fine, thank you. Mr. Kennedy in? Yes, sir. Please. Thank you. Mr. Gump to see you, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, that's fine, Jacob. Show him in here, please. Mr. Kennedy will see you, Mr. Gump. Hello, Kennedy. How are you? Just fine. I see you in from Washington. Oh, huh, that's right. But how did you know? <laughs> the Japanese tree blossom. It's still fresh. There's only one place where you can get that species in the United States at this time of year. That's Washington. 
Now imagine a Department of Justice man giving himself away, eh? <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Kennedy. Well, Mr. Jameson is on the phone. Very important. Excuse me, Gordon. Right, all right. Hello, Walter. Who? Dr. Geronda? Hmm. You don't say. Yeah. All right. I'll be right out. Dr. Geronda? You're getting fast action, Gordon. What do you mean? You came here to investigate Dr. Geronda's gold formula, didn't you? It beats me how you make these deductions. Seconds. My hat and coat. You're quite sure that when you came into this room, you didn't see anyone. All I know was that the hand grabbed me and threw me down the stairs. What's this? Well, that wasn't here before. Just a minute. this case if you value your life, the clutching hand. Our old arch enemy, the clutching hand. In that case, we're dealing with a very clever and resourceful criminal, Kennedy. Well, what could he want here? A formula for making gold might be one thing. I'm in. Mr. Kennedy, here are some notes on the gold formula that the doctor dictated just before he... Miss McMillan, are you quite sure that you saw the formula book just before you left the room? Yes, the doctor had it in his hand. Thank you, Miss McMillan. That's all. Anything, sir? Oh, not yet. What do you make of it, Craig? Chemical notations. Looks like a page from a formula book. Well, what happened to Dr. Geronda? My belief, Walter. They took him through those French windows. When we came back in this room and found Dr. Geronda gone, all the windows and doors were locked. No doubt you're right. But they were opened and locked again from the outside. And that's how it was done. Hey, what are you doing here this time of night? Stop where you are! Stop! Or I'll shoot! Bill, get that car!
Let me go. Oh, what is what are that you... stuff? What's going on here? Nothing on me. Help me with this fellow, Regan. Come, Come on, on. Get out of here. Oh, Take your hands off. Listen, I'll tell you. Cut it out. Just a minute. What's the meaning of this? I found this man peeking in a window. What were you doing at the window? That's my business. Why, Blown, what's the matter? What's going on here? That's what I'd like to know. There's been a little trouble here, gentlemen, that has to be ironed out. What's wrong? Something terrible has happened, sir. What is this? What's the policeman doing at the door? Mr. Montgomery, this is Craig Kennedy. How do you do, Mr. Montgomery? What's the trouble? Dr. Gironda has disappeared. Yes. And we believe that he has been murdered. Murdered? What makes you think he's been murdered? Dr. Gironda has disappeared. And the gold formula with him. What do you know about the gold formula? I know that the gold formula was to be the subject, to be brought up at a meeting you men were to attend. The man who was to discuss that subject and the gold formula has disappeared. I'm also aware of what it would mean for one of you men to own that formula. Do you mean to imply that I would steal my own property? I mean, I mean my company's property? I imply nothing. The government is interested in that gold formula. Government? And gentlemen, I've been assigned to this case as chief investigator. That mean that the government can confiscate the gold formula? Certainly not. It belongs to the corporation. May I get you anything? No, thank you, dear. I'll be back soon. You gentlemen may go now, but hold yourselves available for further questioning. Okay. Well, just a minute, Margaret. Tell Mrs. Gironda I'll see her later. She'll understand. Yes, sir. Louie. Louie. He doesn't think you did it. Don't worry, my dear. I... Good night. Good night. I'd like to ask Mrs. Gironda a few questions. I'll ask Verna if her mother can talk to you. Verna, Mr. Kennedy would like to speak to your mother. Of course, if it's important. But she's terribly upset. She's trying to rest. Oh, it's of no importance. If you will just excuse me, uh, I'll be on the way. I'm sorry about Mother. Oh, that's all right. I'll see you later, Walter. Right, Craig. what this may lead to. Craig Kennedy is a master detective. And if he should get to the bottom of this, why, there's no telling what it is.
Kennedy, don't touch anything if you don't want to be blown to pieces. <laughs> realize what this may lead to? Craig Kennedy is a master detective. And if he should get to the bottom of this, why there's no telling what it is. anything if you don't want to be blown to pieces. <laughs> What's the matter, mister? Say, what are you doing here? Why, I just came to deliver a package. Oh. 
Gee whiz. What happened to you? How did you get in there? I... I was working at my bench. Someone hit me on the head. That's all I know. What's the matter, Craig? What happened? That car, Jamison! We've got to catch it! Craig, get that man. We'll put the handcuffs on it. All right. Come on, you. Here he is, Craig. Frisco. Yes, got anything? Uh huh. This fellow has. What's that? Sounds like it came from that truck. Here, Marty. Guard these men we come back. All right. Oh. It's gone. Say, if my car is broken, which one of you fellas are going to pay for it? Go out look, up, up, up. look out, look out. I'm just itching to pull the trigger. Boys. There's no question but what the presence of this truck outside Girondo's house tonight has something to do with this affair. And there's no doubt that you're right, Gon. Let's see what these two drivers have to say. Come on. I want to know what you two men were doing on the Girondo estate. That's my lawyer. You're wasting your time, buddy. Is that so? Gon, you'd better take this roadster here and get back to the Girondo estate. We're going to investigate this trucking company. What about these two? We'll take care of them. Come on. All right, turn around. Head out. I want you to keep a keen eye on these men until the police come. They're desperate characters. <clears throat> now, not a move out here. That will be all for tonight. Who's that 
Wilson's truck. Something's going haywire. Go in and tell the boss. I want you to slip out from under that wheel. Be here and keep your eyes open. All right. I'm going inside. Okay. What can you tell me about a truck that was sent out to the Duranda estate? I can't tell you nothing. You'll have to see the manager. Is he in? Well, he's pretty busy. Well, you tell him that I want to talk to him about a moving job out on Montclair Drive. He'll understand. All right. Hi, Captain. Hello, oh, boss. A few things I'd like to talk to you about. All right. Hey, Craig. Craig, come here a minute. Listen. I just saw Denton go in the Harbor Hotel. Oh, you did? Sure it's Denton? I want you to just keep your eye on him. Okay. See ya. Well, what can I do for you? I just want a little information. Who ordered that truck out to the Gironda estate? Couldn't have been our truck. We got no such order. Oh, yeah. It's your truck, all right. It has your name on it. Where's the guy that brought my truck in? Shh. I'm down. He's in with the boss. Beat it. If what you say is true, that truck must have been hijacked. Hijacked, eh? Well, sir, that truck of yours is right outside your office at this minute. Now, if you want to get in touch with those two drivers of yours, just get on the telephone and call up the police station, because that's where they are, old man. Where's your sidekick? Hey, you boys got me wrong. Yeah, I suppose you're standing there waiting for a streetcar. Where's the other crook? But officer, the, the crooks got away. Come on, you're coming with me. Oh, but officer. Number eight, your 
more detail is Kennedy's apartment. Number three, see that number seven is relieved and don't let him lose sight of Mrs. Geronda. Number six, the paper you brought me was not the missing part of the gold formula. Continue the search. I want action. <laughs> All this discussion doesn't mean a thing. There are only two important facts. First, Dr. Gironda's gold formula is missing. Second, we've got to get it. The first fact, Mr. Chairman, is that Paul Gironda himself is missing. He must be found. Of course. That's understood. All we need is a little patience, gentlemen. I've been talking to Craig Kennedy, and he assures me that he has several clues that will reveal the guilty party. We've done all we can, gentlemen. The meeting is adjourned. What are you so nervous about, Joe? Hello? I want to talk to Mrs. Geronda. Sorry, Mrs. Geronda is not at home. Any message? No, no message. Thank you, sir. Now, Miss Geronda, I want you to try not to worry too much about your father. I'm quite certain we shall have some good news about him very shortly. It's a great relief to hear you say so, Mr. Kennedy. You ladies will just excuse me. I'll get back to my work. Oh, of course. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, Shirley. Goodbye. Goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, Verna. See you all later. A new book just arrived, Mr. Jameson. Perhaps you would like to see it. I certainly would. Thank you very much. Quite a touch of gas there, young fella. <coughs> Hello? Hold the phone, please. Mr. Kennedy. Yes, Jenkins? Mr. Sullivan on the phone. All right. <coughs> you all right now? Yeah. Hello? I just saw them take an old man into 506 Front Street. It may have been Dr. Geronda. Just a minute. Jenkins, get my hat and coat. All right, you just watch there. I'll be right down. Kennedy's heading for 506. The fools, they've blundered. Use plan one, two. I've got to get to Front Street. Come on, Jameson. I'll get you some good fresh air. Make a new man out of you. <coughs> well, I certainly need it. <laughs> oh, boy. Say, that fellow's stealing my car.
Stealing my car. Happy! Get that car! Boy, that was a close shave. I should say it was. What's more, it looks like that driver got away. Yes, I guess he did. Come on, Jameson. We've got to get back to 506 Front Street. those papers. They may be the missing part of the gold formula. Hello? Yeah, we wrecked a taxi, boss, but he got away. What about number nine? He's okay. Use plan B. I'll take care of Craig Kennedy myself. Did you tell the boss? Yeah, and he was pretty sore too. Come on. Where to? To headquarters. Get him popping. Just a minute, old man. 
I'm awfully sorry this had to happen. Well, that's all right. Here, do you think that'll square it? Yes, thanks. Hey, now look here. Get out of here as fast as you can. New development, Sullivan? No, nothing. Where have you been? We've been out in the country. Oh, well, I've been waiting for you by your car. By my car? Where is it? Why, right around the corner. <laughs> I see. The boys must have brought it back. We'll pick it up later. Number two, you're still O'Hara until further orders. How do you do? How do you do? I understand that you have an invalid lodger, an old man that just moved in. Yes, a retired sea captain. Yes, I'd like to see him if I may. Sure, come right in. Come in. A couple of gentlemen to see you, Captain O'Hara. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, I'm sorry to intrude, Captain. I expect one else. That's all right, gentlemen. I hope you find your party. Thank you. I'm looking for Mrs. Geronda. Mrs. Geronda is not in. Not in? No, sir. She's in the colonnade. Oh, the colonnade, huh? Yes, sir. must believe and trust in us. Have courage, have faith. I have courage. I have faith. Follow closely the prescribed instructions. And now you will take the first steps to perfection. Hey, what is this, a game? How dare you interrupt our journey to perfection? Your journey to what? enough not to disturb my concentration. Nix, get rid of these fellows. I want to talk business. Uh, go, Hannock, please.
Now you know what I'm here for. Someone might hear you. We're just stalling. Where is it? Oh, but you shouldn't have come here. I don't care where or how you get it, but get it. All right, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, you may get in touch with me later. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Developments? Yes, I, I think I have it. The gold formula? No. The brown dye that won't fade. Oh, the brown dye, eh? Two, six, three, four, three, four, two. You know, Mr. Gaunt, I believe the government's decision in placing this case entirely in Kennedy's hands was a good move. Hmm. If Kennedy can't solve the disappearance of Dr. Gironda, no one can. I agree with you. But I'd like to ask Mr. Kennedy a question. Go right ahead, Mr. Cromwell. How do you do, Mr. Jameson? Hello there, Jenkins. Is the boss in? Yes, sir. Thanks. And there. Hello. Hello there, everybody. Hello, uh, Jameson. Uh, hi, Jameson. Here you are, Craig. What is this? Uh-huh. Here you are. I, I guess your old mate, Captain O'Hara, will certainly be glad to see you. I'm afraid it's going to be a surprise for Captain O'Hara. Hmm. <laughs> yes, this is no place for us. We'd better be going, Cromwell. Well, good luck, boys. See Goodbye, you later, So long. Goodbye, Mr. Cromwell. Try this on, Craig, and see how it fits. Oh, that's hardly necessary, Jameson. Well, I think the trousers will fit all right. Here, I got something for you. Thought maybe you'd like it. Oh, an eye patch, eh? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I think it'll be all right. I think so. I beg your pardon, ma'am. But have you got a room to rent? I have no vacant rooms. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. You see, uh, I sort of figured I'd like to live at the same boarding house as my old friend, Captain O'Hara. Oh, so you're a friend of Captain O'Hara's, are you? <laughs> Indeed I am. <laughs> well, in that case, I have one room. But it's right next to the captain, and you will have to keep mighty quiet. I'll be as quiet as a mouse, ma'am. Very well, then. Come in. Ah, bless your heart. In here. Well, this is pretty good. How much for the room now? $4 a week, in advance. Well, that's all right. There you are. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable. I will, thank you very much.
Welcome, brother. Look who's here. Welcome, brother. Look who's here. That flashlight is a good target to shoot at.
Just the man I'm looking for. Hey, Craig. Come on. Step on it. He got away. Got away? Got away? Must I do everything myself? Get out. Get out. Get out! Now, Captain O'Hara, there are just a few more questions I want to ask you. I'm not answering any questions. Oh, yes, you are. They can probably make you talk down at headquarters. I'll talk. What do you want? That's better. Now, the first thing I want to know is, uh, who is the clutching hand? The clutching hand? I don't know. The last time I saw you, you were impersonating an invalid. How do you explain that? Oh, yes. I was hanging around near the docks when a car drove up. Chauffeur stop and call me over. He said the man in the back wanted to talk to me. And uh, who was that man? I don't know. I never saw his face. Yes. Go on. The man told me he wanted to play a joke on a friend of his. He wanted me to be an invalid and sit in a wheelchair. He said he'd give me five dollars. That's all I know. Would... Uh... You recognize that man's voice. Have you heard it again? Yes. Jameson, take care of that man and don't let him get away. What happened to you? I started up that ladder and somebody hit me over the head. Are you all right now? Yeah, I'm okay. Come on. Hmm. Our old friend. 
hand, the clutching hand. I'm sorry, Craig, I didn't stay here as you told me. But I thought you would need some help. That's all right, Jameson. This will probably fit into a little plan that I have. Tell Miss McMillan that I want to see her. Yes, sir. I can't do another thing. You've just simply got to wait. Oh, Mother! Mother! Oh, please go. Go now and hurry, will you? Go on. Oh. What is it, dear? Shirley has found some papers. She says they may have something to do with the missing gold formula. Oh. Oh, well, uh, listen. I think the best thing to do is call Mr. Kennedy. Come on, Verna. Let me have those papers. Oh, I don't dare. So I can turn them over to the corporation. No, I must have Mrs. Durand's permission first. Oh, but Shirley... Mrs. Geronda on the telephone. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Geronda? Very well. Goodbye, Mrs. Geronda. What's the matter, Craig? Something important at the Gerondas. Come in. Messenger boy just left this note, miss. Thank you. You may go. Wickham. Miss Werner is waiting for you, sir. Thank you. Hello, Werner. Hello, Walter. I'm so glad you came, Mr. Kennedy. I'll get Shirley right away. But thank you, Werner. Come up here. I'm afraid something's wrong. Shirley isn't in her room. Maybe Shirley's with your mother. But she might be in the study. Will you please see? Of course. Thank you. Anything, Craig? Yes, Walter. Here's a note from Dr. Geronda asking Shirley to meet a Captain O'Hara down at Front and River Street. 
Wickham, bring her hat, please. Wickham, tell Miss Varner we had to leave. She's not to worry that we'll see her later. Yes, sir. You know by this time why you are here. You know where the missing part of Dr. Geronda's formula for making gold is. I do not. You do know, and I mean to have it. But I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. You defy me, eh? No, no. Look. And what you see will show you that I am not to be trifled with. There is Paul Geronda. He can see. He can hear, but he cannot talk. As long as I will it, he will remain in this condition. You must get the missing part of that formula for me, or your fate will be like his. I mean business. No, no. I haven't that paper. But you can find them and will if you know what is good for you. I will give you just 24 hours to get those papers. I want all the papers relative to the gold invention, and you are to tell no one of what you have just seen. Do you understand? Hello? Kennedy's car is outside. Use plan AA, then bring the girl back here. Hey, Craig. Why, that looks like Miss McMillan. Yes, it is, Miss McMillan. Come on, we'd better follow her.
Hello? Kennedy's car is outside. Use plan AA, then bring the girl back here. Hey, Craig. Why? That looks like Miss McMillan. Yes, it is, Miss McMillan. Come on, we'd better follow her. That's funny. Yeah, no driver. Open that. Well, this is a new one on me. <laughs> what do you make of it, Craig? Radio controlled. We've been trailing an empty car. But what about the explosion? Also radio controlled. Boys, let's get out of here! Come on, Craig. I want to get that big guard. Wait. Let him go. We've got to get back to Front Street and pick up Shirley's trail. Girl may be in danger. Okay. missing part of the gold formula. Go home and find it. Say nothing to anyone. Go. Your car is across the street. Just a minute, 
good young lady. Jameson. Look. That's O'Hara. That's the man Shirley was to meet. Here. You take this whistle. I'm going to make that O'Hara talk. Now, if you see anything suspicious, you just give me three blasts. But well, don't you think I better go with you? You just stay here and watch this car. I may have to make a quick getaway. I don't know her. Oh, yes, you do. Come on. Come clean. Girl Shirley has just gone home. Kennedy has just followed O'Hare in the Harbor Hotel. Come on over. He may need some help. Trouble, eh? Yes. Any trace of Shirley yet? She's home. Sullivan trailed her there. Good. We'll get out. Sullivan, you had better remain here and keep your eyes open. Come on, Jameson. Your father's alive. Father? Alive? I saw him. Where is he? Well, he's at the... Why, what is it? I can't tell you, Myrna. Why, Shirley, I don't dare. I can't... Why, what do you mean? Where's Miss McMillan? Oh, Walter, Mr. Kennedy, my father's alive. Shirley, you've seen him. Seen him? Yes. Where's Shirley now? In there. Why, that's strange. What's strange? Why, uh, why, surely she was here just a moment ago. Shirley! Shirley! What do you make of it? 
It looks to me like they've got her again. Through the window, huh? No, Jameson. I don't think so. to tell me the combination of your safe. You are about to receive your instructions. One, two, three. Soon you shall reach the seventh step. Remember, you are to tell me... Tell you what? Why, this is part of Mrs. Geronda's lesson in the seven steps to... Nonsense! Get her out of that spell! What is the meaning of this interruption? Uh, Mr. Montgomery objects. Just why this interference? Because I have something of greater importance to discuss with you, alone. Come with me. How are you? Where am I? You're in the colonnade. How did you get here? I don't know. I was in the living room and something grabbed me by the throat and... Well, I guess I fainted. Berna said that you saw her father. Yes. On the television screen. Oh, it was terrible. Yes. Go on, Miss McMillan. That horrible man. He demanded all the papers that I had relating to the missing gold formula. Who was this man? I don't know. I didn't see his face. Then, uh, you're to deliver the papers to him at this waterfront place? Yes. And take them to the Harbor Hotel this afternoon and ask for a man named Mr. O'Hara. I believe I have a plan, Miss McMillan. That is, uh, of course, if you're brave enough. If it will help to return Dr. Geronda, I'll do anything, Mr. Kennedy. You're a very brave girl, Miss McMillan. Come, we'll go back to the house. Thank you. 
Anything I could do for you? Yes, thank you. I'm looking for a Mr. O'Hara. I have some papers here for him. He's at 506 Front Street. He's waiting for you. Right across the street. Thank you very much.
Whom have you there? Craig Kennedy, Chief. That's not Craig Kennedy. Take his beard off. Kennedy's tricked us. But he didn't trick me. Number eight, tell number six to bring the girl to me, here. Yes. The rest of you can go. I want to talk to this man alone. work, Sullivan. You stand over by that door. And when the man comes in with Miss McMillan, you take care of him. Right. The boss says for you to bring the girl to him upstairs. What the boss says goes with me. Keep quiet, no harm will come to you. Step in there. Craig Kennedy gave you those papers you brought me, didn't he? Yes, he did. There are two pages torn out of Dr. Geronda's gold formula book, which contain the gold formula. I want those pages. But I told you, I don't know where they are. What do you mean by coming in here without a signal? Why, I... Number eight said you wanted me to bring the girl to you. Bring her where? He said to the hangout. Go back and tell the boys to surround the hotel. Something's gone wrong. Now we'll see if your friend Craig Kennedy can save you this time. <coughs> Hey, the guy upstairs is a cop. The boss says not to let him get away. Hey, you can't go in there. James, Craig, they're on to us downstairs. with this car I just bought. Oh, I see. <laughs> Jameson, we've simply got to find Miss McMillan. Come on, Jameson. Follow that car.
know it's against the law for a private citizen to have a siren on his car? Just a moment, officer. Hello, Louie. How are you? Well, hello, Jameson. I didn't recognize you. Say, this is Craig Kennedy. You know him, don't you? Oh, yes. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Kennedy? Well, it's rather late now. You see, the car we were pursuing got away. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I had to warn this man about the siren. Yes, I know. I'll take care of him. All right. Thanks, Louie. Thank you. Looks like the clutching hand has beaten us again, Craig. I'm not thinking about the clutching hand. I'm worried about Miss McMillan. Let's get back to my apartment, Marty. Okay. The way you look at it, but all of Geronda's papers should be turned over to the corporation. You know I cannot do that. Not as long as there is a doubt as to whether Dr. Geronda is dead or alive. The corporation is entitled to the gold formula. It may be among his papers. I hold Geronda's estate in trust. And I cannot turn over anything until it is legally established that Dr. Geronda is dead. Very well. But there are ways and means to get what I'm entitled to. Yes? Mrs. Geronda just phoned and said that she would be on at the 5 o'clock appointment with you. Did she give any reason? No, sir. Very well. I have to leave on an important matter, Cromwell. And in the meantime, you'd better think over my request. Good day, Montgomery. Oh, hello, Joe. What brings you here? I want to borrow your car. When and for how long? I want to take a little trip out to the Geronda place. Be careful with it. What have you got up your sleeve? You know when I pull it what I've got up my sleeve. Let me know when you get back. Hello, Vernon. Oh, hello, Walter. Did you find Shirley? Yes, we found her and lost her again. That's the reason I came back here, to see if she'd returned. Not yet. Miss Verna, a phone call for you. Oh, thank you. Yes? Repeat exactly what I have told you. Verna, listen closely and please do as I ask. Yes, what is it? Continue. Verna, go to your father's study and get all of the papers in the center drawer of his desk and bring them to the colonnade at five o'clock sharp. Please do this. But I don't dare do such a thing. I mustn't. Tell her that unless she does as she is told, all of you will share the fate of her father. Unless, Verna, we do as we're told, we will all share the same fate as your father. Verna, what's the matter? I can't tell you, Walter. Excuse me, please. Any messages, Jenkins? Yes, sir. There's a message recorded on the visitone over the Geronda hookup. Thank you. I don't dare do such a thing. I mustn't. Unless we do as we are told, we will all share the things we want. Jenkins, get Mr. Jameson on the telephone. He's at the Geronda home. Jameson on the phone, sir. Thank you, Jenkins. Hello? Oh, hello, Craig. I'm glad you called. I got something very important to tell you. I know all about it. 
Now, while you're there, I want you to do something for me. Listen carefully. I want you to set every clock in the Gironda home ahead one hour. Understand? Yes. Oh, all right. Tell Miss Verna that I'm calling. Yes, sir. Step right in. Murdered. Murdered? Walter, I want you to help Miss Geronda to the house. I'll take care of everything here. All right. This is no place for you, Vernon. I better take you over to the house. I think you should let Mr. Kennedy know you had a five o'clock appointment with Mr. Montgomery. But my dear... I phoned and canceled the appointment. Well, he probably never received your message. Yes. He probably never did. Good evening, Mrs. Geronda. Hello, Walter. How do you feel, Verna? I'm all right, thank you. Mrs. Geronda, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Why, certainly, Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy, this is my last warning. Drop this case or you will be next. If you keep quiet so you can't be heard over the microphone, nothing will happen to you. This is Shirley McMillan. I'm in the colonnade. 
Help me. Help. Help. Jameson, you stay here with Berna and Mrs. Geronda. I'm going to Shirley. But Craig, you stay here with the lady. You did exactly as I expected. You've led Kennedy into my trap. be heard over the microphone, nothing will happen to you. This is Shirley Mellon. I'm in the colonnade. Help me. Help. Help. Jameson, you stay here with Berna and Mrs. Geronda. I'm going to Shirley. But Craig, you stay here with the lady. You did exactly as I expected. You've led Kennedy into my trap. I'm going over there. Craig might need some help. Do you recognize any of your captors? No. Oh, Shirley, I'm so glad. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, just a minute, Margaret. I'll deliver the linen to Hammock. You just help Miss Gerard uh, take Miss McMillan to the house. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll bet that Hammock and his partner are back at this whole thing. We'll see.
What's in time? Just a minute. Let him stay there. He's tied up just the way I want to see him. Hammock's the man I want to talk to. Gentlemen, I am honored. Thank you. How long have you been in this room? Here? I should say about two hours. Two hours. I should like to ask you if in that time you have heard anything. By that I mean, have you heard any noise? Or any disturbance at all? No, I... I have heard nothing. You see, I've been deep in study. I see. Well, sorry. Oh, Mr. Kennedy. This is yours, I presume? Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, are you still suspicious? I certainly am. How about you? Not now. Otherwise, Hammock would have kept the document. Oh, yeah? That's just a gag of his. I wouldn't trust that bird around the corner. Report number six. Werner Durando has delivered the papers to Craig Kennedy. I want those papers. They may be the missing part of the gold formula. There is to be a meeting of the directors of the research corporation at the Durando home. This meeting is of vital interest to me. You know what I expect. all about. I found him going through your papers. Oh, 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 oh. Take care of him, will you? Oh. Oh. What happened, Jenkins? Oh, that man there struck me down and tied me up just before you come in. I want to know what you were looking through my papers for. The formula. Formula? What formula? That one. You're trying to decipher. It's my property. The formula for making a new chemical warfare gas. This is my invention, my own personal property. Then why did you give Dr. Geronda a copy? He is my superior and I gave it to him merely as a matter of record. Gordon, looks like a case for you. You'd better take him into custody. There she is. Go easy now, Joe. Don't worry about me. Oh. 
Am I intruding? Uh, no, no. Uh, and Nicky, uh, I'd like to talk to this man alone. Very well. Okay, Strick. What do you mean by coming here? You know what I want. Oh, but what you ask is impossible. You want me to shoot my mouth off, huh? Oh, oh you wouldn't do that. How are you, Wickham? Why, nobody here yet? Not yet. Sir. We'll wait in here. I hope this meeting doesn't last all day. I have other business to attend to. What have you there, Bouchard? More knives? Yes, sir. Still following your old hobby, eh? Ah. Ah, those are beautiful. <laughs> There are no other like this in the whole world. Gentlemen, come here to talk about knives. Let's get down to business. We cannot proceed without Mr. White. Why couldn't we have held this meeting at our office? You must understand that Mr. White is Mrs. Geronda's personal attorney. And though the papers which he holds may contain valuable information concerning the gold formula, nevertheless, both he and Mrs. Geronda must be present when the contents are examined. I broke several appointments to come here. I'll see if I can find Mrs. Geronda. While he's gone, I'll put in a telephone call. I think I will, too. I'm getting tired of your excuses. I want results. Mrs. Geronda? Mr. Cromwell phoned. He said the directors have just arrived. Oh, uh, thank you, Nicky. Directors, huh? Yes. Uh, and you'd better go now. I told you before, I want results. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, j just give me some time, will you? Mrs. Geronda is expecting me. Yes, sir. Mrs. Geronda, the gentleman, will be here presently. Will you wait, sir?
Why, Craig! Craig, what's the matter? What's the matter? What happened to you? <sighs> Clutching hand. Did you call, sir? Yes, Wickham. I want you to give me a hand with Mr. White. How are you now, Mr. White? All right, I think. Uh, what's going on here? What happened? My briefcase. Where is it? It was stolen. Stolen? Mr. Gerando's papers were in it. I told you we should have held this meeting at the office. This may mean that the missing gold formula is among those stolen papers. Well, standing here talking won't get us anywhere. Now, if you gentlemen will just remain calm, we'll solve the whole matter. resemblance? There's a certain similarity in the construction of the letter E and the word steel. However, I wouldn't say definitely. <sighs> Mr. Kennedy is expecting you. He's in the laboratory. Okay. Hello, Mr. Kennedy. <clears throat> Hello, Marty. Hello, Marty. Here you are. What did Mr. Gaunt say? He didn't say nothing. See, I think that guy's goofy. He gives me this envelope with just a blank piece of paper in it. How do you know it's a blank piece of paper? Well, I saw him put it in the envelope. Oh. Better put him on your staff, Craig. He's practically hired. <laughs> Anything else? That'll be all, Marty. Thanks very much. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Kennedy. Yes? A guy downstairs slipped me a dollar to hand this to you. I'll take it. All what? right. Shall I see what's in it, Craig? Go right ahead, Jameson. Walter, look out!
resemblance? There's a certain similarity in the construction of the letter E in the word steel. However, I wouldn't say definitely. Mr. Kennedy is expecting you. He's in the laboratory. Okay. Hello, Mr. Kennedy. <coughs> Hello, Marty. Hello, Marty. Here you are. What did Mr. Gaunt say? He didn't say nothing. See, I think that guy's goofy. He gives me this envelope with just a blank piece of paper in it. How do you know it's a blank piece of paper? Why, well, I saw him put it in the envelope. Oh. Better put him on your staff, Craig. He's practically hired. <laughs> Anything else? That'll be all, Marty. Thanks very much. Okay. Oh, say, Mr. Kennedy. Yes? A guy downstairs slipped me a dollar to hand this to you. I'll take it. All what? right. Shall I see what's in it, Craig? Right ahead, Jameson. Walter, look out! What was that, Craig? Dynamite. And enough to blow us to pieces. <whistles> Marty. Yeah. Who gave you this? Why, a guy outside gives it to me to bring in to you just as I was coming into your place. Ever seen him before? No. And I never wants to see him again, either. All right, Marty. You can go, but don't say anything about this. All right. Nice, playful guy, whoever he was. Yes. Walter, get the car and meet me in the usual place, sir. I'll be right down. All right. That's Kennedy's pal, the reporter. The boss had trailed Kennedy. Not the other guy. Sorry they kept you waiting, Jameson. That's all right, Craig. Look at that. That's one of Geronda's cars. Yes, it is. Who's driving that car? I don't know. Never saw him before. That's funny. Come on, step on it. Follow that car. Round 
Well, the old wheel of fortune, where it stops, nobody knows. All right, I'll take you to his room. Chief. Did you see a heavily veiled woman come in here a few minutes ago? No. She went upstairs. Room number eight. Feel me in. Okay, brother. Coming right up. Say, listen to me. That's old stuff. What I want now is action. Yes, but you had what you call action once before. And it sent you to prison. Do you want to go back there? Who'll send me there? Not you. I'll make sure of that. Steve, give me a drink. Joe, won't you please listen to me? Steve says there's a couple of suspicious looking guys downstairs. Thinks they're cops. Perhaps they followed me. Oh, what shall I do? Where's your car? What? Why, I, it's out in front. I'll take it down the back way. Get the car there. Oh, right. hurry, will you? Hey, tell that chauffeur outside to get that car around to the back.
Get your car started, Sullivan. Right. What happened? The woman is hot. Get back, get back. Get back. The woman got away through the back door. Now get back. Get back there. Why, get back. Stand back there. Go ahead. Get away? Of course she did. Say, what's the matter with you? Were you scared? No, only I don't want a classy person like her found dead in this place. Who said anything about that? Nobody. Well, keep your mouth shut. Okay, Joe. I don't see that drawn to car around here anywhere. Well, I want you to try and find out who's using it. I'm going to take a look around the laboratory. All right, I'll check in the house. Good evening, Mr. Jameson. Good evening, Wickham. Is Miss Verney in? In the living room, sir. Thank you. Hello, Walter. Hello, Verna. How are you? Walter, I have some snapshots I want to show you. Oh, Wickham, will you please have Margaret bring me those snapshots from my room? The chauffeur's taking Margaret into town, miss. Oh, all right. I'll get them myself. Excuse me. Certainly. Oh, hello, Nicky. Discover anything yet? No, not yet. Take some time. Oh, say, Nicky, when this gets cold, take it to my house. You understand, huh? I understand. And uh, put this in the fire. Thank you. these television broadcasts take your mind off your work? I never turn it on when I have important work to do. Nicky, as uh, Dr. Geronda's assistant, do you know he has recently invented a poison gas formula? Mr. Brown is the inventor of the new poison gas. Was anyone else besides Brown familiar with this gas formula? The files are open to all officers of the Geronda Research Foundation. Would anyone... Uh, have access to the gold formula that Dr. Geronda invented? No, Mr. Kennedy. That's a secret that Dr. Shade of no one, not even me. He wrote the formula in his diary, which disappeared when he was murdered. I believe that Dr. Geronda is alive. And I think within 24 hours, I will be able to prove this. No one will be more grateful than I, Mr. Kennedy. Thanks for your information, Nicky. Jameson. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, have you seen Shirley? No, no, she... the television. I saw him. I heard the voice. His voice. Whose voice, Nicky? Dr. Geronda, your father. Turn on the television, quick. Yeah. 
This is my last warning. What you see here will happen to all of you if Craig Kennedy does not drop this case. I want the missing portion of the gold formula. <laughs> What are you going to do, Craig? Shirley, she has some valuable information for you. It may help. Did Shirley say what this information was? No. Where is Shirley? In her room. What are you going to do, Craig? Shirley, she has some valuable information for you. It may help. Did Shirley say what this information was? No. Where is Shirley? In her room. Out the window. Hey. 
Well, what's the idea? What's the matter with you? Well, Bush off. Well, what do you mean by doing this to me? I'll oh, show sure. you. Come on here no, with I'm, me. You come no, on here with here. me. Leave me alone, I tell you. Oh, I'll get her. This is an outrage. Get her. Well, you pay me for this. Yeah. I'll deal you with yeah, that. Sure. Here, just a minute. What's the trouble here? What's the matter, Walter? I found him on the grounds and he was acting in a very suspicious manner. But, Louie, what's the trouble? Oh, I came to see you and this man here insulted me. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I made a mistake. Mrs. Geronda heard loud voices and she's very much upset. I guess we'd better go to your mother. Just tell your mother that there's nothing to worry about. I shall. Hurry back, Jameson. Why did you come back tonight? I have something of great importance to tell you. But surely you could have waited until tomorrow. No. Tomorrow would be too late. I must tell you tonight. Listen. Kennedy has a knife belonging to me. And he suspects me of murder. And as long as he had that knife, I'm in danger. Where is the knife? It must be at Kennedy's laboratory. Well, what do you want me to do? On the simple takes, I want you to go to Kennedy's laboratory and get that knife if possible. Will you do it? Yes, I'll do my best. I'm very sorry, Mr. Bouchard, to have caused you any inconvenience. Quite all right, sir. By the way, Miss McMillan, those papers you intended to show me, will you bring them with you and call at my laboratory tomorrow? Certainly. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Bouchard. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. McMillan. Good night. Good night. Good night. What luck! Look at this knife carefully. The one that Kennedy has is identical. Jenkins. I'm going out and I'm expecting a caller. Tell the lady to wait. I'll be back in a few minutes. Very well, sir. I have an appointment with Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy is out. He will be back any minute. Wait here, please. Thank you.
How do you do, Miss McMillan? How do you do? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I had some business to attend to. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I just arrived. Did you bring the papers? Yes, I did. They're right over here. Thank you, Miss McMillan. I should like to impress upon you, if I may, that any document or any object you may find might be of great value. I'll remember, Mr. Kennedy. I'm awfully sorry about that little affair last night. By the way, Miss McMillan, may I ask how long you have known uh, Mr. Bouchard? Oh, for quite some time. I'm sure you will find everything there, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, Shirley. How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, sort of cold in here. Say, Craig, did she get the knife? Yes. She got a knife, but not the one knife I expected her to take. No? Now look here. I want you to follow her and don't lose sight of her. Just as good as done, boy. Good afternoon. Will you please inform your master, Mr. Bouchard, that Mr. Duval is here and would like to see him? Won't you come in? Thank you. If you'll kindly have a chair, I will inform Mr. Bouchard. Thank you. Mr. Duval, I am very happy to see you, sir. My dear Bouchard, I see uh, you have a very valuable collection of knives. Oh, my collection is very small, but uh, I am very proud of it. <laughs> You're entirely too modest. Hello, and how's my Shirley? Oh, splendid, thank you, Louis. Did you get it? Yes. Fine. Come here, will you please, dear? I want you to meet Monsieur Duval, also a knife collector. Miss Macmillan, Monsieur Duval. How do you do? How do you do? And now, to business. Uh, Monsieur Bouchard, I do hope you shall not be disappointed, as I have uh, brought only one knife from my collection. But it is a very valuable one, as you can see. It can't be possible. What can't be possible, Louis? That knife. Well, I thought I, I had the only one of that pattern in existence. Wait, monsieur, I will show you mine. That is my knife. A knife like this in the whole world. Yes, Boucher, you are quite right. It is your knife. And it may interest you to know that the man who last handled this knife is a murderer. Just a minute, please, Miss McMillan. Mr. 
Mr. Kennedy! What is the meaning of this? Now, if you'll just calm yourself, I'll explain. Do you mean to accuse me of murder? You have admitted that the knife is yours. But he didn't kill anyone. I'm sure of that. I'm afraid you're a very poor advocate for Bashar. Didn't you steal a knife from my laboratory? Yes, I did. But I did it for Louis's sake. The disgrace would have killed his mother, even if he were only under suspicion. It is true, monsieur. What do you know about the knife, Gaston? I was playing cards. I lost. Then I borrowed with a knife of security. I want you to tell me who gave you the money for the knife? The man I played cards with. He first took my money, then the knife. Would you recognize this man if you saw him again? Why, yes, sir. I will never forget him. Where did you play cards with him? At the Harbor Hotel. Well, of course, you would like to make amends to Monsieur Boucher, would you not? Why, yes, sir. And then you'll come with me to the Harbor Hotel and do exactly as I tell you. Now, for the time being, we'll let matters rest. Come, Gaston. guy works with the knife collectors downstairs. He wants to see you. Hasn't he lost enough already? Where are you going? That easy mark is downstairs. He's looking for me. I guess he wants a game. I just saw him down the street talking to a couple of guys. They look like cops to me. Cops, huh? Yeah. Say, that fellow downstairs is getting nervous. Tell him to meet me over in the hallway at 506. I'll be right over. I'll take care of him. Well, did you see him? Yes. I am to meet him in front of 506. I see. Now remember, don't you forget our signal. The minute he comes out, you light the cigarette. Very well. Don't go, Joe. It might be a frame-up. Oh, uh, I know what I'm doing. I guess you do. gave the signal, Carlos. Where is he? Carlos, where is he? He's dead, Greg. Call an ambulance. All right. I'll look this place over. See that all my orders are carried out.
What a surprise, Mr. Kennedy, for both of us. Now that you're here, I have another surprise. Pleasant for me and very unpleasant for you. You don't think I came here without protection, do you? Let them come. They can have what's left of you, Craig Kennedy. What a surprise, Mr. Kennedy, for both of us. Now that you're here, I have another surprise. Pleasant for me and very unpleasant for you. You don't think I came here without protection, do you? Let them come. They can have what's left of you, Craig Kennedy. those shots. They were meant for me. The clutching hand again. But my bulletproof vest saved me. Do you recognize that incense? That's the same that Hammock used in the colonnade. You're right. I've had a hunch all the time that they were mixed up in this business. Miss McMillan, I want this visit to remain a secret. Just as you say, Mr. Denton. Let's be frank. As Dr. Gironda's secretary, I believe you know more about the gold formula than anyone else outside of Dr. Gironda. Why, Mr. Denton, you don't mean that Not I... Not only for the company, but for personal reasons. I would like to see that gold formula recovered. I guess you understand. I was employed personally by Dr. Duranda. 
And if I knew anything about the gold formula, I would turn it over to Mrs. Durant. But, Miss McMillan, you don't understand. I think I do, perfectly. Yes? Mr. Gant to see you, sir. Have him come in. Have a chair, Mr. Gaunt. Thanks. Of course you know I sent for you. Yes. I demand that you remove Craig Kennedy from the Geronda case. And, uh, what are your reasons, Kenton? I personally object to having my private business pried into. Well, you know, the government is very much interested in this gold formula. And until it's found, and Dr. Geronda is proven dead or alive, Kennedy stays on the case. If that's all you have to talk about, good day, sir. Miss Dillon. Get the Harbor Hotel on the phone. Mr. Kennedy. Hello, Hammock. You seem to be taking a great interest in our colonnade. Yes, more than you can imagine, really. You see, an old friend of mine, a Dr. Nevelet, is interested in the seven steps. Of course, you know Dr. Nevelet. Oh, yes, I, uh, I have heard of him, but I've never had the pleasure of meeting him. A great man and a great philosopher. Then you would like to meet him? Why, yes, of course. Well, uh, Dr. Niblett, in that case, may attend Mrs. Duranda's Thursday afternoon session. Yes, I'd, I'd be delighted. Well, thank you. I'll notify Mrs. Duranda. Thank you. Then I shall see you on Thursday. Very well, Thursday. Bye. Wait for me. Well, it's all cold. What's cold? This racket. Kennedy's wise to us. Come in. I 
Hi, Blackie. What's the racket? Why, uh, haven't you made some mistake? Mistake nothing. Your name is Blackie Humphreys. What's the game now in this outfit? I've never seen you before. Can it? You and I were cellmates at last stretch in the big house. All right, Harvey. You win. We've been working on the queen of this castle. She's got a fortune in jewels, but now the jig's up. What do you mean, the jig's up? Kennedy's gonna spring a Dr. Niblett on us. Our Thursday afternoon session. Well, what of it? Well, he's gonna make us show our hand. I think this Niblett guy's a cop. And just when we were all set to have Mrs. Geronda take the steps of the jewels so we could grab our diamonds and make a getaway, this thing has to happen. I've got it. Let's move the date up to Wednesday. Then you impersonate Dr. Neblett, and we'll get a chance to grab the jewels and make a getaway. What do you say? Okay, that suits me. Swell. You tell the lady about the change in date. All right. So number six is a traitor, eh? Yeah, he's going to impersonate Dr. Neblett. They're going to get Mrs. Geronda's jewels and split three ways. Mm, we'll see about that. You get O'Hara and Wilson. Use plan A, B, and report to me for further orders. So he's going to double-cross me and get the jewels, eh? <laughs> Hello, Verna. How do you do, Mr. Geronda? Hello. Any news about Father? Nothing definite, I regret to say. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I'll forgive you this time. Well, we'd better be on our way. Goodbye, Jameson. Goodbye, Mr. Onda. Goodbye. Goodbye, Craig. See you later. Oh, Jenkins. Any developments? Yes, sir. A message recorded on the visitor over the Geronda hookup. While Mr. Geronda was here? Oh, no, sir. Sometime before that. Thank you, Jenkins. Hammock to see you, madam. Show him in, Wickham. Yes, madam. We'll continue this later? Yes, Nicky. Oh. Oh, Hammock. Mr. Kennedy found that Dr. Neblett could not be present on Thursday afternoon and asked if we could advance the meeting to Wednesday. Why, certainly. Hmm. Unfortunately, Mr. Kennedy cannot be present. But, after all, Dr. Neblett is the important guest. Yes. I'm very anxious to meet Dr. Neblett. He was delighted to learn that we are to have the ceremony of the jewels. Really? Yes, it, it is so impressive. Yes, it is. Very well. Then I shall inform Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Hammock. Good afternoon. That's the costume I want, that white one. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Come again.
All right, boys, let's put him in the car. Joe Mitchell comes in, Steve. Tell him I want to see him. He's upstairs now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm telling you, that's the way it goes. Hello, Joe. Hello. Got a little job I want you to pull for me Wednesday afternoon. I can't, Wednesday. I've got a date I can't break. Yeah? Well, I'll get someone else. I'll be seeing you. Mrs. Geronda left strict orders not to be disturbed. She's preparing for the ceremony of the jewels to take place in the colonnade. Very well, Wickham. Don't disturb her. Very good, sir. Come along, Walter. Come on, Sullivan. Ahead, Sullivan. We'll keep you covered. Come on. Uh, that'll hold him. Come on.
Craig, you hurt? No, I'm all right. Sullivan and I will take care of these fellas. Get out there and bring in O'Hara. All right. Watch them. Well, Humphreys, what have you got to say for yourself? I knew the game was up the moment you sprung that Dr. Neblet on us. Who's in this racket with you? Well, at first, Gallagher and I were going to pull this thing alone. Then we cut in Spike Harvey to impersonate your Dr. Neblet. And the dirty rat double-crossed us. You can question us all you want, Kennedy. I don't know a thing about the gold formula. Our racket was the jewels. Well, Craig, where's O'Hara? You know what that means. We're getting close. How's that? When a criminal begins to boast, it's a sign of weakness. Hammock! Hammock! Why, what's the trouble? He... Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Geronda. We just put a stop to a couple of imposters who were attempting to steal your mother's jewels. Hammock? An imposter? Yes. None other than notorious Blackie Humphreys, a crook. But my mother, Mr. Kennedy, she's very ill. She seems to be in a sort of daze. What about this, Blackie? She'll be all right. She probably inhaled some of that incense. She'll come out of it in a little while. Hand me that jewel case. I want to return these jewels and ask your mother a few questions. Sullivan, take these boys down to headquarters. Right. Your bungling of the Geronda colonnade job 
has caused Kennedy to lay plans to raid this place. My efforts to secure the missing portion of the Geronda Gold formula have been jeopardized. Number eight, I want you to see that all evidence concerning the Geronda Gold formula is removed from here and placed aboard the Nellie D at once. Number four and number two cooperate with number eight. You know what happened to number six. Answer me. Yes, yes sir. sir. If you don't want to meet the same fate, you'd better not bungle this job. Now go. When I see them yeah. when I get ashore tonight, I'm going to go tonight. And when I meet that galley in the dark, I'm the deep love, though I'm going. Say me some of that hair tonic, slug. It's too good. Ba 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 bitty too. Hey, get down your coat. I'm an over, slug. Hot dog. Look at here. I'm going to town now. Who's got a towel? It was my towel. You never had a towel. Hey, what's the big idea? Hey, you mugs. Captain's orders. No shoes left. Hey, Captain. Hey, you mugs. Hey, hey, you mugs. Captain's orders. No shore leave. What do you mean? No shore leave. Where get that stuff? I got a date. What do you mean we can't go ashore? You heard me. Who's going to stop me? I'll stop all of you. You said no shore leave. Uh, there they are. Yeah, but I didn't say put them in the hospital. I'll go out and get some extra men. And see that they don't get away. They won't get away, Captain. It can't be done, Hobart. You're the head of the corporation. You control the ships. I got the cargo. But you don't understand. You easing up because you expect to get rich from the Geronda gold formula? I'm interested in finding the gold formula purely from the company's angle. <laughs> don't make me laugh. I'd like to get my hands on it, and so would you and everyone else connected with it. You're covering a lot of territory, Hobart. I cover enough to include the meetings you've been having with Mrs. Geronda. Mr. Geronda happens to be a stockholder in the corporation. You just tell Captain Hanson to carry out my instructions. We'll forget the other stuff. Oh, hello, Joe. Hello. See you later. What's new? I just heard that little talk you had with the party who just left. So what? You lay off the Geronda family, or your friend will be missing you the next time he calls. That's possible. People disappear very suddenly around here. Hello? Oh, oh, it's you. No, I can't talk to you. Not now. Call me tomorrow. That Mitchell threatening you again? Yes, Mickey. Oh, what am I going to do? Don't worry about it anymore. Just leave him to me. Oh, but Mickey, you don't mean... No, nothing like that. Uh, like a second-hand shop. What's the big idea? Elliman just phoned that the Nellie D is sailing with a strange cargo. An invalid old man. Dr. Geronda, huh? Where's Sullivan now? I've got to meet him near the Harbor Hotel. Here, get into this. I may need you. All right. 
Got a berth, mate? No. Want one? Sure. Well, then L.E.D. needs a few men. Report to Olaf, first mate. All right. Howdy, Cap. Howdy. Shot a man? Yes, and I don't care how I get him. I've been an able-bodied man. A real seaman. I might even pay his wages while he's away. What's your deal, mister? Never mind the name. Let's have a drink. I'll point out your man. Okay. Give me a deck of cards, Steve. What'll it be? Straight. Right. What do you have, Captain? The you, you. You? A little straight, please. It's up to you. Seafaring man? No. But I'll take that drink. I'm not feeling so well. Slow, eh? It's none of your business. Later. Just a drink. What do you have? You know what I want. Okay. Captain. Is everything ready? I've got to leave. He'll play your game. Okay with me. I'll deal. That one? Sure. Any of you fellas want to go ashore? Come on. I'll go. He's had too much.
see you brought my cargo. Yeah. Well, that's that. Well, take good care of him, Cap. idea. You're going for a little trip. A little trip. Nothing. Look out for that guy. He's dynamite. I'm not afraid of that big gorilla. forward where you belong. Yes. Where's that other new man? I don't know. I thought I told you to go forward.
Where's that other new man? I don't know. I thought I told you to go far. for him, Olaf. Search the ship and don't let him get ashore. Yes, sir. Now you stay here until we get out to sea. And if you know what's good for you, don't try any monkey business. What'd you do? Try to desert? No. This ain't my ship. He's like you. He's been shanghai Riley. Come on up and keep guard. Sailor. If you help me get off this ship, I'll make it worth your while. Yeah? I've heard that before. This is on the level. This deal will make me plenty. Say, uh, you talk like a guy that expects to come in for some heavy dough. I'm working on a racket with a rich outfit named Gironda. It's going to pay heavy, Jack. So what? Where do I come in? Get me off this ship and I'll split with you. Hey, listen, buddy. I've got an idea. Now, you just pretend that you're sick, see? I'll call this guard, and when he comes down here, I'll take care of him. Hey, guard! Oh, guard! Where are you at down there? You better come down here and take a look at this guy. 
He looks like he's going to die. Early. Going. Where do we go from here? We'll find that fellow had to be Shanghai. All right, show the way. What do you have, boys? Uh, where's Hobart? He's not here. Give us a drink. You know what I want. What's yours? Beer. Hobart said it was okay. I thought you said he wasn't in. Oh, he don't want to be disturbed. Oh, he don't want to be disturbed, huh? Come on. Come on. Wait a minute. You can't go up there. No. No. Come on. What do you mean by trying to have me shanghai What are you talking about? You thought you'd get rid of me, huh? Who's he? Never mind him. He's a pal. That's more than you can say, you dirty double-crosser. Take it easy, Mitchell. I never tried to have you shanghai But if you didn't, who did? You've given Mrs. Rana plenty cause to have you put away. Say, if I thought... Say, that's an idea. You get her down here this afternoon and leave the rest to me. Nothing doing. I don't want any trouble around here. Hey, wait. You do as I say or I'll give the cops some information. Okay, I'll get her here. I guess you fellas don't need me. I'm going to get a drink. Okay, tell Steve to give you a couple of them. Thanks, boss. You're not cutting him in, are you? No, do I look like a sap? What do you have? I'll have it straight. Well, sir, this is on the house. Yeah? Yeah. Who said so? Hobart and Mitchell. I made a second trip to the Nelly D. <laughs> and you should have seen the captain's face. But he was all right after I explained to him who I was. Are you sure he didn't know anything about the fake Dr. Geronda? Absolutely, Jameson. The captain thought he really had an invalid passenger aboard. Well, what about this fellow Mitchell and uh, 
Why did they try to Shanghai him? I'll know more when I get a line on his fingerprint. And, uh, what transpires at Hobart's this afternoon. I see. I wonder what's keeping her. She ought to be here soon. When she comes, I'll have her set up. There'll be a lady looking for me. When she comes, send her up to my office. All right. I, uh, I have an appointment with, uh, Mr. Hilbert. Uh, right upstairs, room eight. Thank you. done for. Just a minute. There's the water. There we are. Here. Try a little sip of water. All right. There you are. Feel better? Yeah. Say, is there any place we can take this lady? There's the room next door. Give me a hand there, young fellow, will you? Did she kill him? Yes, and this notoriety isn't going to do me any good. I warned Mitchell about that woman. We should pick some other place to do her killing. Guess I'd better phone for the police. That won't be necessary. Fine, how is that? What? You're a cop? Mrs. Geronda didn't kill Mitchell. What do you mean? When Mitchell picked up the phone, this gun was fired by an electrical charge. How was that? I'll show you. Now, I'll show you, Walter. 
Mitchell was killed by the murderer placing this gun on this contrivance, this copper plate. Held in place by these books and attached, you notice, from the receiver of the telephone to the plate. Now then, when Mitchell heard the phone, he picked up the receiver, which immediately discharged the bullet which killed him. I'll demonstrate it to you by pointing the muzzle of the gun to the ceiling. Now stand back, Walter. Watch. And that, Jameson, is just the way it was done. Then Mrs. Geronda didn't fire the shot. No. Mrs. Geronda was framed. By whom? By the man who rang that phone from the switchboard downstairs. Albert, you're under arrest for the murder of Joe Mitchell. Put out your hands, Albert. Oh. Jameson, take care of Mrs. Geronda. Call headquarters.
Were you hurt? No, I'm all right. Got the car here. Yeah. Give me a ride back to town, will you? All right. Come on. Kennedy. Hello, Gaunt. Any luck? Hmm. Take a look at this. The records show that he was released the day before Dr. Geronda disappeared. That clenches it. Joe Mitchell killed Montgomery. What was his motive? We'll clear that up when we find out why Mrs. Geronda came to Hobart's room. Well, where does Hobart fit in? Perhaps it's the old story of thieves falling out. Hmm. Situation makes it look bad for Mrs. Geronda, eh? Before we jump at conclusions, let's see what Mrs. Geronda has to say. Stop acting like a caged animal. I don't like that crack. You've got no one to blame but yourself for spoiling the best chance you ever had of making a fortune. That's my hard luck and a break for you. Your end of the Geronda Gold formula will make you plenty. Come on, do I get what I want? I guess you do. And that's the whole sordid story. Of course. And I'm glad you told me the truth, Mrs. Geronda. And Mother has nothing to worry about anymore. Nothing. If you'll just stay here with your mother, I have an appointment downstairs. Thank you. Now, don't you worry, Mother. Everything's going to be all right. Well, it didn't take you long. No, I'm glad to say. I've cleared up Mrs. Geronda's connection with this case. Oh, she came clean, eh? Yes. She was married to Joe Mitchell when he was sent to prison. On what charge? Blackmail. Divorced Mitchell and married Dr. Geronda. When Mitchell was released from the penitentiary, he immediately began to blackmail Mrs. Geronda. Threatened to tell that she was the wife of an ex-convict, eh? Yes. And uh, Mitchell's appearance, shortly after Dr. Geronda vanished, made it look bad for both of them. Did she tell what she was doing in the colonnade when Montgomery was stabbed? It seems that she had an appointment in the colonnade with Mitchell. And when Montgomery came in, she left. She didn't want Montgomery to see her talking to Mitchell. But why did Mitchell do away with Montgomery? Mitchell believed that Montgomery was spying on them and killed him. Oh. Hey, Craig, Shirley's got some information that might mean a break in this case for you. What is it, Miss McMillan? Mr. Denton asked me to come to his apartment. And while I was waiting in the reception room, I overheard him talking to a man named Hobart. What did they say? Hobart said he first had to get some assets at the Harbor Hotel to take aboard ship before leaving the country. Anything else? Denton told Hobart he had no one to blame for the trouble he was in but himself. Did he mention what the trouble was? No, but Mr. Hobart said that Mr. Denton's share of the Geronda Gold formula would make him a very rich man. Yes, continue. Well, I thought Mr. Denton was coming into the reception room, so I told the butler I couldn't wait, and then I would see Mr. Denton later. Gone. We've got to find out what these assets are that Hobart has hidden at the Harbor Hotel. 
If Denton calls you again, Miss McMillan, you make some excuse until you hear from me. All right, Gaunt. Come on, Walter. Number eight. Here, sir. Number three. Here. Number two. Present. Number eight. You get the subject aboard the Nellie D at once. Yes, sir. Number two. You help number eight take care of Captain Hansen. Yes, sir. Now, men, remember, you all know what you have to do. And uh, don't shoot unless you have to. All right. Take places. Sir. Nobody here, Craig. They may be in the room on the other side. Well, let's take a look. Well, a wheelchair, eh? What's this? Cuff link? Here's a cuff link with the initial G on it. I'll bet that stands for Geronda. Geronda. Dr. Geronda. You're right, Jameson. His wheelchair and he's been in this room. Jameson? Yeah, I'm all right. How about you? Fine. Hey, that's a very clever idea, that shoot. Yeah. It's no doubt constructed to run a wheelchair up and down. I wouldn't doubt it.
Sullivan. Captain Hanson, too. What happened, Sullivan? Well, I was watching the Nellie D when the crew, aided by some new members, mutinied. Captain Hanson went up to try to stop him, and they took after him. I tried to help the captain, and they uh, caught me. They all mutinied at all of them. He was overpowered and thrown in a hole. Say, Craig, just before the fight started, I heard the initials PG mentioned. PG? That must mean Paul Gironda. The Nellie D is sailing with a new captain. They've evidently got the doctor aboard. And if we're going to save him, we're going to have to hurry. Well, how do we get out of here? Well, that's the door they brought us down through. Doctor, you're on. I'm glad we're in time. I'll get some help and we'll get you out of here.
Dr. Geronda. I'm glad we're in time. I'll get some help and we'll get you out of here. Just in time, Captain. How are things going on deck? They forced me down the companionway. I took refuge in the first room I came to. They're closing in all around us. What? Captain? You bet. <laughs> Is head man aboard this ship. He <laughs> sure is. <laughs> well, looks like the picnic's over, Craig. Yes, we've got Dr. Gerondo aboard ship, and we've got to get him ashore. Dr. Gerondo? Where is he? Down here in the captain's cabin. We've got to take him home. Now, listen, you better go and get the car right away. Okay. We'll get him up, Captain. I'm all locked up down the hold. That's fine, Sullivan. Give a hand here with Dr. Geronda. I got the car ready, Craig. Good. Take care of Dr. Geronda. Careful now. We'll get him up, Captain. Doctor Duran, let's go. Hey, 
Take Dr. Geronda home and drive as carefully as you can. I'm going back to the Harbor Hotel. I'll see you later. Okay. Sullivan, you stick with me. We'll take care of it. Any news, God? The rats have all gone to their holes. Have you seen anything of Hobart? No. I found Dr. Geronda. Jameson's taking him home. Well, that's great work, Kennedy. I'm going over to the Geronda home now. I want to see what information I can get from the doctor. All right, give me a call if you hear anything, will you? I shall. Uh, Sullivan. Daily board meeting as usual, Mr. Denton? What's that? What meeting? The board meeting. Oh, yes, the board meeting. I'll say there's going to be a board meeting. That's all, Miss Dillon. How do you do, ladies? How do you do? How's your father? Why? What do you mean? Isn't he here? Didn't want to bring him home? Why, no. Do you mean you found Dr. Geronda? Why, yes, of course. Oh, how is he? He's just fine. In great shape. As a matter of fact, I expect Walter along here any moment with him. Oh, I must tell Mother. Won't Mr. Denton be surprised to hear this? Why did you mention Mr. Denton? Why, he just phoned me. St. Craig. Where's Dr. Geronda? He's gone again. What do you mean? Well, they held us up and over part us and took your car and took Dr. Geronda also. Miss McMillan, just before Walter came in, you mentioned that Denton had phoned you again. Yes. He wanted to know when I was going to keep that appointment. You're going to keep that appointment now. Here's what I want you to do. Hi, fellas. Nice work, boys. Now, get out. Oh, Mother. Mother, I'm sorry, but Walter couldn't help it. He was outnumbered. Yes. 
Yes, I know. He was outnumbered. Oh, but then... Then, do you realize that... that they may kill your father? But Mr. Kennedy said there was no danger of that. Father means more to them alive than dead. Alive. Alive. Yes, alive. I'll tell Mr. Denton you're here. Thank you. Well, I'm certainly glad that you came. Well, now that I'm here, Mr. Denton, what is it you want? Well, uh, have you given any thought about our last conversation relative to the missing gold formula? Mr. Denton, I told you that I had no idea where the formula was. And if I did know, then I would... Yes, I know, Miss McMillan. But won't you come over on my side in this matter? You know, I can certainly make it well worth your while. And you profit more than being just a private secretary. I beg your pardon. Miss McMillan, will you please oblige me by leaving the room? Why, yes, of course. Denton, you're under arrest. What for? For the murder of Joe Mitchell. Now, Geronda, I'm not a doctor, but I've got my suspicions. There's a specialist on his way here, and when he restores your memory, I want your gold formula. Geronda, if you know what's good for you, you'll talk. Come on, quit stalling. Hello. Denton, I've just got a hunch that Hobart is going to drop into your apartment. Haven't you got him in jail? No. Then I've been tricked. We'll talk about that later. Come on, Jameson. You will double-cross me, will you? You're that double-crosser, telling the police that I killed Mitchell. You're a liar. Where's Paul Geronda? I haven't got him. Don't lie to me. Come clean. Where is he? I tell you, I don't know where he is. Stay right where you are. The game is up, Hobart. Every statement you made about Dr. Geronda's gold formula has been recorded on a dictaphone placed in this room. Get together, you two.
You will double-cross me, will you? You're the double-crosser. Telling the police that I killed Mitchell. You're a liar. Where's Paul Geronda? I haven't got him. Don't lie to me. Come clean. Where is he? I tell you, I don't know where he is. Stay right where you are. The game is up, Hobart. Every statement you made about Dr. Geronda's gold formula has been recorded on a dictaphone placed in this room. Get together, you two. Drop that gun, Hobart. Throw up your hand. You'll hang for this, Hobart. What's the trouble here, Craig? Hobart just killed Denton. There goes Dave! Yeah, Craig. Say, did he get a whole bark? No. He got away. That's too bad. All right, Joe, we've got it. Good. Tell me, Walter. Exactly. Where did you find this? Well... Kennedy, your life is in danger if you continue on this case. I have been told to tell you that this is your last warning. Quick, Walter. The daylight developer. This picture I took of Dr. Geronda, I believe, will lead us to the clutching hand. Walter, get some printing paper. While the negative is drying, I'll change my clothes. How long do you think it'll take you? Oh, about ten minutes, I think. That's fine.
That's enough. That's enough. I got him covered here, Craig. Here's our eavesdropper. Well, he's not the clutching hand. I know it. But now I know who the clutching hand is. We'll just keep this man with it. We may need him. Call up Miss Dillon and arrange for a meeting of the board of directors at the Geronda home at once. All right. Come on, you. Get going. Skip that. What can you do for this? Hmm. Looks pretty bad. How'd you do it? Cleaning my gun and what all. Get busy. Wait here just a moment. All right, give me your hand. Take out a spot, Walter, and watch. If the man we want tries to get away, he'll probably make for this car. All right, Craig. We'll fix you up all right. What's that? Why, I don't know. Wait a minute. What's all this about, Nicky? Why, I, I don't know. I, I was helping a man with a shot. Shot? Yes, and suddenly he seemed to go crazy. He knocked me down and rushed out. You were working here when this man came in? Yes. What about this book? What? That's Dr. Geronimo's formula book. Right you are, Nicky. Put out your hand. Come on, put him out. Why, what's the idea? I've been waiting for this opportunity ever since Dr. Geronda disappeared. Where are you going? Just a minute. Come on, put him on. Ladies, well, gentlemen. Well, has he arrived yet? Not as yet. What's the meaning of this? That's the man that hit me? Yeah, he has. Where did you get him, Gaunt? Trailed him here. Caught him as he was making the getaway. Begins to look as though we're getting to the end of this case. Look. What's that? Dr. Paul Geronda's gold formula book. Where did you get it? From Nicky here. You don't mean... No. He's not the clutching hand, but he's had this book ever since the night Dr. Geronda disappeared. Why didn't he make a break with the gold formula as long as he had it? He would have. But there's part of the gold formula missing. Oh. How about the clutching hand? Now that I have this book, I'll have him before the day is over. Lock these men up. I've got an appointment at the Geronda home. Okay, Kennedy. Come on, Phelps. Here you. <coughs> Gentlemen. You can think what you please. But as attorney for Paul Geronda, I repeat, 
Unless something is done immediately, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. But Mr. Cromwell, what about Craig Kennedy? He must have something to report. He called this meeting. Well, he'd better have something to report. Gentlemen, I have something to report. Have any of you gentlemen ever seen this book before? Dr. Geronda's formula book. Right you are. Dr. Geronda's gold formula book. The formula, the formula book. Uh, as attorney for Paul Geronda, I demand that book. <laughs> Just a minute, Mr. Cromwell. There are some chemical notations here on page eight of which I would like a copy. Miss McMillan. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. Will you please make a typewritten copy of this page for me, please? Certainly. Thank you. Now, that'll just take a few minutes, Mr. Cromwell. dead, Walter. And this is the end of the gold formula. There you are, Gordon. I guess that's all. What about the gold formula? There never was a gold formula. What do you mean? Paul Geronda, who was Werner's guardian... Wasn't he a father? No. Geronda was appointed Werner's guardian when she was two years old. Recently, he misappropriated vast sums belonging to her. In order to recoup his losses on the stock exchange, Geronda hit upon the plan to fake a synthetic gold formula. Talk his company into selling a gigantic issue of the stock, grab his share and skip. Well, where does Nicky fit in? The night Geronda disappeared, he made Miss McMillan believe that he had memorized a part of the gold formula. Nicky, believing the formula to be authentic and recorded in the formula book, attacked Geronda and stole the formula book. 
Geronda recovered and discovering his fake gold formula missing, he realized that the book held evidence to expose him as an imposter. Now, unaware of whom his assailant was, he thereafter spared no efforts to recover the so-called gold formula. Well, uh, what about Wickham the butler? Oh, you mean Major Courtney of the Army Intelligence Service. Courtney? Yes. His job was to locate the war gas formula that Brown invented and which Dr. Brown, or Dr. Geronda, was trying to sell to a foreign power. Did he find it? Major Courtney and the war gas formula now are on their way to Washington. Visit home. Frank Kennedy, this is your last warning. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, we're waiting dinner for you and Shirley. And bring Mr. Gaunt. <laughs> I must say that's very nice of them.